make sure everyone can be seen. Okay. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, good morning. Thank you all very much for being here. It is certainly not a secret that thousands of rape kits have not been tested across our state. Many are sitting there and have been sitting there for many years, and they have critical DNA evidence that could help ensure justice for survivors. That is why Assemblymember Chu and I decided a few months ago to introduce two bills that would help both learn the full scope of the problem and to prevent any new rape kits from going untested. The core of SB 1449 is actually very simple and very straightforward. It will have a tremendous impact on the lives of survivors and it will help ensure justice and identify serial perpetrators. SB 1449 simply changes one word in existing law by saying that law enforcement agencies and forensic lab laboratories shall follow instead of should follow, as it currently states, listed timeframes for submitting and analyzing rape kit evidence. As you may know, just two years ago, Governor Brown signed SB 813, my bill which eliminated the statute of limitation on rape. Though that was definitely a huge victory, the road to justice for survivors of rape and sexual assault will not be complete if these rape kits are never tested in the first place. All rape survivors deserve to have their rape kits tested within a specified time frame, submitted within 20 days and tested within 120 days. Rape is one of the most traumatizing experiences of any individual's life. And we need to make sure that these rape kits are processed swiftly because the rape kit process itself can be a traumatic experience. And when the victim chooses to have that rape kit done, we want to make sure that it doesn't sit on a shelf somewhere and go untested. I would like to thank Alameda County District Attorney Nancy O'Malley, the Joyful Heart Foundation, and Natasha's Justice Project for all sponsoring this important legislation and for continuing to shed a light on this very serious and important issue. Now, I would like to ask Assemblymember Chu to say a few words. Thank you, Senator Leva, and I want to thank uh, the folks with us and all of you for uh, your interest in a topic that I never expected when I was elected to the legislature to have to work on, and that is the very simple and obvious idea that we need to test every rape kit that's been collected in the state of California. As a former prosecutor, I assumed that this was the case already in California. When I came into office, uh, many of us learned about the statistic that was put out by the Obama administration that it was estimated 400,000 rape kits in our country were untested. We didn't know what that statistic was in California. I also learned uh, that in our state, we had had over the past decade over a half dozen bills that had died, been watered down, or otherwise vetoed. Uh, and when I introduced uh, the first version of my bill, AB 41, it actually met that same fate. It was a bill that got stalled in committee in its first year, did not move forward, uh, had opposition uh, by some pockets of law enforcement. Uh, but I'm very grateful that last year, AB 41 uh, will help to provide some transparency by requiring that we track all kits that are collected as of January 1st of this year into the future not test them, simply track them. Um, it's important that we are moving forward this package. Uh, as Senator Leva said, I do hope that the injustice of our state's failure to collect, uh, to test uh, all of our kits is obvious, but I do think it's worth repeating. After the horrific crime of a sexual assault, the collection of this evidence involves incredibly invasive procedures that last hours. And when a rape kit remains untested, if it is sitting collecting dust on the back room of a police crime lab or on the shelf in a sheriff's department, it re-traumatizes survivors and allows criminals to roam free. Even with what we've been able to do in California, there is so much that we still have left to do. Uh, and I would just note that this is an area where we are behind as a state, other states like Texas and Kentucky, in terms of rape kit backlog reform. My bill this year, AB 3118, will help take us a step closer to eliminating the backlog by requiring all agencies that receive, maintain, or store a kit to conduct an audit of those kits uh, and to report that to the State Department of Justice so we know exactly what is the magnitude of the backlog. We don't know today 
how many untested kits there are in our state. The best estimates have come through some organizations that have tried to comb through public sources and media reports, but that is not what the most populous state in our country should be doing to handle our crime evidence. I'll also note that there's ample federal funding available to address backlog kits, but to apply for those funds, localities, cities, counties need to know exactly how many kits they have sitting on their shelves. Let me just end with two additional thoughts. Um, oh, actually, I realize that the Joyful Heart Foundation will probably talk about a recent documentary uh, on this topic, but one statistic in that documentary that came from a major city in our country showed that for every four kits that's tested, we get a hit on one out of four. And for that kit, one out of four of those hot uh, tests uh, have been associated uh, with individuals who have competed, uh, committed serial crimes. We're talking about being able to solve the next Golden State Killer cases. Uh, there have been too many tragedies that have been avoidable because we have not tested these kits. That's what this is about, and that's why I'm so grateful to be working with great advocates on this. With that, we wouldn't be here but for some progressive uh, law enforcement uh, leaders who have been leading the way on this, uh, and I've been really blessed that across the bay from where I represent in San Francisco, in Alameda County, we've had a DA who had the foresight and the courage to say enough is enough, we need to test all of our kits, and has been able to bring many cases to justice because of this. I'm honored to um, bring to the podium Nancy O'Malley, the District Attorney of Alameda County. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, first, let me start. I am Nancy O'Malley, the District Attorney of Alameda County, and as Assemblymember Chu stated, that this has been a focus of mine for many years. As I begin, I want to just reflect on my background. When I was in college, I was a rape crisis volunteer, and I took calls from, uh, from women who had been sexually assaulted by the East Area Rapist. That was in the late 70s. At least one of those survivors, I was with her in the hospital when she had her exam. Those kits went untested for a number of years, and nobody knew who that individual was until a couple of years ago when there was legislation passed to test the kits. Get them out of the evidence rooms, get them into crime labs, and test those kits. And we now know in the last month who that individual is who is responsible for sexually assaulting more than 51 women and for sexually assaulting and murdering 12 other women. That is the benefit of testing rape kits. Two years ago, two months ago, we knew the same person was responsible for those crimes because the kits were tested and we had a profile. And just in the last couple of weeks, we were able to identify him. So I am so grateful for the championship that has been shown by Senator Leva and also by Assemblymember Chu in taking on this issue, not just once, not just this year, mm -hmm. but doing this year after year after year to make sure that we are bringing justice to victims of sexual assault crimes. We're preventing further sexual assault crimes by identifying and apprehending the perpetrators who are committing serial rapes. And for those individuals who have been accused or may be convicted, the DNA can also exonerate them. There are so many benefits to this not the least of which is bringing justice to the victim survivors who went through the ordeal that was described by Assemblymember Chu. I'm very proud to be one of the sponsors of both SB 3118 and AB, AB 1449, sorry, I have that backwards, AB 3118 and SB 1449. I am, both are very vital to public safety and I think that uh, we, we know that very clearly now. And both of these bills will work in conjunction with each other that will allow California and all of us to know with the accurate count of how many forensic sexual assault exam kits are sitting in a police evidence room and to make sure that they are tested and that information, that profile put into a database. In my county, in Alameda County, several years back, I undertook the process of identifying how many rape kits we had in our evidence room. They say rape kits, I really mean sexual assault kits. So we undertook that with all of our police agencies and we discovered we had 1,900 sexual assault kits that were untested and they went back as far as 15 years. We have now have no backlog of kits in my county. All of those kits were tested 
and all where there was a profile that has been uploaded into the national database and we're moving through with prosecutions on some of those cases but this is obviously not just an Alameda County issue as you've heard and why this legislation is so these pieces are so critical at the federal level we went and advocated to the Department of Justice and to the to the President of the United States and explained the problem of having a backlog of untested kits as Assemblymember Chu and Senator Le Leva just referenced. Today, there is over $175 million that is put out through the federal government for local law enforcement across this country to test those kits that have been sitting in police evidence room. And this is an important step. I will say that uh, with Without doing an audit, we don't know what we have. To ensure justice to victim survivors and to keep communities safe from those, those predators, it's essential that we test those kits. Victim survivors do uh, consent to whether they want to have a forensic exam, and when they do consent, they're entitled to know that law enforcement and prosecutors are doing everything we can to, uh, to protect them and to treat them with re the respect and dignity they deserve. Let me just end by saying that the leadership that both Assemblymember Chu and particularly also Senator Leva has shown around bringing justice and bringing this issue and bringing the impact of sexual assault crimes to not only Sacramento but to our state is admirable and it's about time. Enough is enough. We've been doing this for more than 40 years. When I was answering the phone and helping sexual assault survivors and telling them that they, it would be important for them to have the exam just in case there was evidence. Enough is enough. We have the tools, we have the forensic tools, and these two pieces of legislation are really going to move California forward in bringing justice to our state and justice to those victims. Thank you. DA O'Malley, we are so lucky to have you on our side. Thank you for being an advocate for so many years. Now I would like to bring up Natasha Alexenko from Natasha's Justice Project. Good morning. My name is Natasha Alexenko. I'm a survivor of sexual assault. I'm also a survivor of the rape kit backlog. Um, my kit went untested for nearly a decade after I was raped and robbed at gunpoint. Uh, to say that this event changed my life is a major understatement. Uh, not only did it change my life, but it changed the lives of my family, of those around me, of those who continue to love me to this day. While my rape kit wasn't tested, the man that raped and robbed me at gunpoint was on a nationwide crime spree. And he wasn't a specialist. He didn't stick to se sexual assault. He committed a variety of crimes in a variety of different states, and he created additional victims. I have to tell you that in, during the time my rape kit wasn't tested, um, one of the hardest things that I had to go through was I, I didn't know my rape kit wasn't tested, so I was under the assumption that I, as the complaining witness, had not done everything I could to apprehend this guy. So I, I felt so guilty. I felt really guilty and I blamed myself for every other victim this monster created. And it wasn't until I found out that the reason we hadn't caught him was my rape kit wasn't tested, that I was able to heal from that terrible guilt that just plagued me for so long. I'm really pleased to say that my perpetrator is now behind bars where he can no longer hurt another human being. And it's really difficult to share this story, but I have to say that one of the reasons I do this um, is these amazing, amazing human beings that are standing behind me are so persistent and have been for so long that they've really inspired me to continue to share my story as, as painful um, as it may be to share. Because I want to be one of the last people that gets up here behind a podium and tells you their rape kit was backlogged, that even though their body was a crime scene, their rape kit sat and collected dust, 
I'm going to be the last person that stands behind a podium and asks you to please think of us and remember us because I want to make sure that California leads the charge for the rest of the nation in creating legislation that supports survivors, supports public safety, and supports every single person in this state and makes them safe. Because as I know from my experience, rapists travel state by state committing a a variety of crimes. So what happens in California matters to everybody in this country. So I want to, once again, thank these amazing people for just pushing this legislation forward. Of course, my advocacy partners at Joyful Heart who have also sponsored this and these amazing elected officials that I know the people of the state have put into place because they pass legislation that makes a huge difference to everyone. And thank you very much for allowing me to share my story. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We really appreciate it. Uh, Natasha, thank you for having the courage to come forward. You're speaking for every victim everywhere, so thank you. Now it is my pleasure to introduce from Joyful Heart Foundation, Ilsa Connect. Well, first I wanna start by thanking Natasha um, because we can't do this work without you. Um, so thank you so much for, for always being there and um, putting yourself and your story out there. My name is Ilsa Connect. I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy for the Joyful Heart Foundation. Founded by actress and advocate Mariska Hargitay, Joyful Heart has made eliminating the National Rape Kit Backlog its top advocacy priority. We are honored to stand with Senator Connie Leva and Assembly Member David Chu, DA O'Malley, and Natasha Alexanka today, and to be sponsors of these bills that will expand justice um, for sexual assault survivors, survivors in California. So you've heard today a lot about the power of DNA to solve and prevent crime and how important it is to test rape kits and how important it is to survivors and public safety. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the national context of rape kit reform. Across the country, communities are testing all rape kits and through that they are finding dangerous offenders who have been free to victimize again and again like, like Victor Rondon and some for decades because rape kits have been sitting on shelves. More of these offenders than we ever thought possible are serial rapists and they're serial offenders. And they are not just committing sexual assault as you heard. They are engaged in burglary, domestic violence, child abuse, and homicide, not to mention a whole host of other crimes. Through testing, Detroit has found more than 850 serial rapists. As Senator Leva explained, California law right now says rape kits should be sent for testing. People are using this ambiguity to not send rape kits for testing, and we know this because we've done a review of agencies across the, the state, and we found that 75% of the agencies that we've reviewed are not sending the rape kits for testing. So the suggestion is not working, and that's why we're working with Senator Leva and proud to sponsor SB 1449, which is going to change the should to a shall. It's law school 101, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and make it mandatory for every rape kit that's collected and connected to a reported crime to be tested within 120 days. More than 20 states, <laughs> more than 20 states have passed mandatory rape kit testing laws. And California is not one of them. More than 30 states have inventoried their untested rape kits. We need to know how many untested rape kits are sitting on the shelves in California. And without an inventory, we cannot begin reform in the state. And that's why we are working with Assemblymember Chu to sponsor AB 3118 to require a statewide inventory of untested rape kits and bring transparency and accountability to the system of rape kit handling in California. And what's important for you to know is that the United States Department of Justice in July of 2017 said that these two practices are best practices. Inventorying rape kits and testing all rape kits, the federal government says these are best practices. Joyful Heart has launched a national campaign to pass comprehensive rape kit reform in all 50 states. And we've developed and advocated for six pillars of reform. And so far, we've been successful in Alaska, Arizona, Georgia, Hawaii, Indiana, Massachusetts, New York, Oregon, I could go on, among others. 
with the passage of these two bills here in California, California would go from adopting zero pillars in the last in the past year to five, making California an example for the rest of the nation, which California should lead on something as important as this issue. And it's important also to understand and realize and accept that rape kit testing does cost money. But this is about public safety. The number one priority of our government is to keep its citizens safe. Testing rape kits also saves money. Cuyahoga County in Ohio has tested more than 4,000 previously untested rape kits and has saved a total of $38.7 million by testing all their kits. So the time, as you've heard, for rape kit reform in California is now. We urge Senator Lara and Assemblymember Gonzalez Fletcher to keep these bills alive by taking them off the suspense file by May 25th. Let's send a clear message to survivors that they and their cases matter. And let's send a clear message to perpetrators that they will be held accountable for their crimes. And that we will not let them remain free on California streets to harm again. Thank you very much. Before we open up for questions, I wanna thank everyone for being here. And I think I can say collectively that enough is enough and time's up. <laughs> So if anyone has any questions for any of us, feel free to ask. This is the time. We did such a good job. You got everything you needed. <laughs> There's one question. All right. Hey there. Are you guys um, making a push for rape kit funding, like specifically in the bill? Is there a push for rape kit funding? And I know that um, Governor Brown, he vetoes most bills that come to his desk with higher state costs unless there's already budget appropriations. Um, what's the deal with that? So SB 1449 does have a budget request of $2 million, but in the May revise, we did see that he did allocate more money to the Department of Justice. So we think that that is a good sign going forward. And I'll just mention for my yes. bill, there was an associated cost of about a million dollars, but as Senator Lave and I both described, we're not talking about budget, budget dust. This is the a budget speckle, speckle <laughs> on the budget dust. Yes. <laughs> Uh, does that answer your question? Very good. And sir, I think you had a question? Yeah, the timing of the Golden State Rapist case, um, don't you think that that should convince your fellow lawmakers uh, that this is the time to get these bills through? If that doesn't convince them, nothing will. So absolutely, that is uh, very, we're very grateful that, that he was caught, and I think it just shows that DNA catches bad guys. There should leave no doubt in anyone's mind. Although I would also add to that, there have been other examples of serial rapists who have been caught, and yet bills like this did not get through. So obviously with the Golden State Killer, uh, the East Area Rapist, we do think this will draw and focus public attention on it, but we can't take anything for granted. Any other questions? Do, do you even have an estimate on how many untested rape kits there are in California? I, I, know, you, I know you gave an estimate of 400,000 at the federal level, but Go ahead. do you have any idea in California? Um, so the Joyful Heart Foundation, um, we, through a project called the Accountability Project, we issue Freedom of Information Act requests to jurisdictions, and we've done that across the state of California. Um, through those requests and through some media reports and self-disclosures, right now we have estimated more than 13,000 untested kits across the state, but that's just a snapshot. So um, we really have, have no idea, but that's just you know a little bit of what we know. You said, you said you sent out a survey to the people who were in charge of this. What was, did they, did you ask them what was their motivation for not testing these? Was it just financial? Um, like, <laughs> they have a oh reason? boy, that's a big, that's a big question. Um, well, w w we send open records requests to, to these departments um, and we ask them how many kits have they taken in, how many kits have they tested and how many are still on their shelves. We also ask them what their policies look like around rape kit handling. So. Through that, we found that 75% either are not sending everything for testing. Some of them don't know what they have in their ev evidence room. They're not tracking and, or keeping track. So it kind of that shows you how le little of a priority it is for them, where their rape kits are, how many they're taking, and how many they're testing. I will mention, uh, just to summarize, some of the public opposition that was laid against some of the bills. And first of all, there are many facets of law enforcement that very much support what we're doing. Uh, DA O'Malley represents that. Uh, and I need to thank her and many women law enforcement chiefs who have really stepped up in leading the charge on this. Um, but there are really two objections to this brought by uh, some of the opposition. 
Uh, one was budgetary, and our response to that is um, we need to know exactly how many kits are untested so we can fight for the budget that departments need to test them. But there were some members of law enforcement that said, as law enforcement, they should decide in what instances they should test kits. And so, for example, uh, in some instances uh, where a uh, person who's charged with a crime um, s confesses to it, uh, the suggestion is, well, he confessed, so there's no need to test the kit. From our perspective, we think you need to test the kit just to ascertain uh, one, to make sure that that evidence is there, but two, in case that individual was, was, was responsible for prior crimes. We don't think this is something that should be discretionary. It needs to be a mandatory part of what it means to fully investigate all cases. Um, also, just uh, in case you want more information, if you go to endthebacklog.org slash California, you can see all of our Freedom, Informa Freedom of Information Act requests and their responses are all uploaded online. Um, but I'll also just add through that project, um, and you know, again, from some media reports and self-disclosures, statewide audits, we have estimated 225,000 um, 225, untested kits across the country. But again, that's a snapshot. We have whole states, as California, who haven't done inventories. I'll, I'll ask you while we're still up there. Yeah. You, you pointed out uh, the uh, 37, 38 million dollars that it takes one community in Ohio. Where does that number come from? Why is it why is it that high? If you could if you could describe that. It's um, costs of future averted victimization. Um, it's law enforcement costs. Sometimes you know you. I think this happened in Natasha's case, but I know it's happened in many others where law enforcement is going down the wrong trail. You know, looking at the wrong suspect potentially, spending money on just chasing this guy across the country, um, and you know the the impact on society of survivors also. Um, survivors after sexual assault, many of them don't return to work. Um, you know, they don't they don't take part in the um, the economic structure in society. So, it, um, but that you can find that information also on our website. That was from the um, Begun Center um, at the Case Western University in Cuyahoga County that that did that study. All right. Well, we thank you all very much for being here. Have a good rest of the day. We will look forward to seeing you when the bill gets signed into law. Full bills. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>